to start tonight back in 2021 with a documentary that was released by Alexei Navalny in Russia that made Vladimir Putin, frankly, look pretty bad. This film showed aerial footage captured by a drone of a $1.3 billion palace that Navalny alleges was built for Putin. He dubbed it Putin's Palace, fit for a diabolical king, equipped with a casino, billiard room, and a room just for electric toy cars. It's very weird. The documentary also went further in outlining the filthy extravagance of Putin's lifestyle, including multiple vineyards he owned and some of his quirky, let's call them, expensive tastes. Like this little detail that I just love, and I bet you will too. A receipt for a toilet paper holder purchased for more than 1,000 euros. I mean, I can't even imagine what that toilet paper holder would look like. I'm not going to try. But the entire purpose of this film was to expose Putin for what he is. Well, we all know he is. A fraud, a cheat, a bastion of corruption. Sound familiar? But what was particularly remarkable about the release of this film, and so important to remember right now, was that it was done when Navalny was already back in jail. He'd already come back to Russia. He did so knowing it could cost him his life, could cost him his continued advocacy for freedom, for democracy, his fight against corruption, and really his ongoing effort to expose Putin for who he really is, a dictator with no clothes. In response, Putin did everything he could to silence him for years. I mean, he put him in jail. He put him in jail again when he returned in a penal colony then, in an isolated, freezing cold, poorly ventilated cell block over and over again. And just days ago, Alexei Navalny, as we all know, was found dead. So as I'm walking you through all of this, you might be wondering, what does any of this have to do with us? And what is happening right now in the United States that we're all so concerned about? Well, a lot. Because as we speak, Donald Trump is being exposed in much the same way that Alexei Navalny exposed Vladimir Putin. And that's because we do follow the rule of law in this country, at least for now. On Friday, a judge in New York City ordered Trump to pay $450 million. That's including interest for what it's worth, but for being essentially a decades-long total fraudster. I mean, he didn't have a toilet paper holder worth 1,000 euros that we are currently tracking, though it's entirely possible. But for decades, he scammed in his own way, cheated in his own way. And he's still scamming, most recently hawking a new line of gold sneakers amid his mounting legal bills and civil judgments. And just like Putin, the more exposed Trump is, the more vindictive he becomes in return. The more embarrassed he is, the more vengeful he gets. Remember, this is the guy who promises to lock up his political opponents, who even says he could have those political opponents executed and he would be immune from prosecution, and who threatens to use the military against people who may protest against him. In other words, very tools that Putin is using in Russia right now. Just listen to how former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney described the stakes of this election just over the weekend. You know, when you think about Donald Trump, for example, pledging retribution, um, what Vladimir Putin did to Navalny is what retribution looks like in a country where the leader is not subject to the rule of law. I believe the issue this election cycle is making sure the Putin wing of the Republican Party does not take over the West Wing of the White House. See, the thing is, we don't actually have to wonder what Trump's America in a second term would look like. It's not that far off. We are watching a preview of it right now in Russia. Trump has a model of what to do if you're an embarrassed, desperate, aspiring dictator. He sees Putin's playbook, he's reading it, and he has every intention of following it. 